Okay. Can okay. you hear me now? Can you hear us? Okay, hey, well, let's start Let's up. start again. Go ahead. Let's start. Let's start from the beginning, kids. Okay, so, well, welcome to the Whiskey Roundtable. We are your hosts, Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Douglas Dunbar. All right. And we, All were, right. we were talking about... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't have. We the were microphone. talking about how some of us had a rough night. We we were out doing an event last night for next week's Whiskey Wizard, and some of us had a very good time last night. And yeah, too much fun. Maybe it is, it didn't is forget to plug week. in the audio. Yeah. So uh, well, we we uh, yeah. we you know last week uh, Saturday we uh, entertained down here uh, with some clients and uh, we. Uh, Tore, tore everything down and put everything away. So as you saw when you came down today, there was barely anything on the table. So we didn't even take into consideration. We're so used to it just being ready. It's just on. Yeah, yeah. it's just on. But um, Sorry about that. But uh, so, so we, we were talking about, we did an event last night um, for next week's Whiskey Wizard. So we won't give too much of that away, but we do want to thank the good folks at the uh, Bedford Lizardville uh, they hosted our little event, and um, and they were they, they couldn't have been nicer, and uh, they rolled out the red carpet for the whiskey round table. So uh, we'll thank them again next week. But that was a, a lot of fun last week. It was a lot. It was. Lot it was a good fun. time. Good time. I mean, it was it was it was beyond good in my personal opinion. We had a great time. We really did. Yeah. yeah. We took a Never. two hour event and turned it into four. They finally kicked so, us out. So, yeah, all this we're doing for you and our big holiday whiskey roundtable extravaganza uh, for next week's show, which is our last show of the year. And uh, then we'll be taking a little bit of a hiatus until about January 22nd. So uh, we'll be taking our winter break, and we, you know, that's a time we have some meetings. Sure. We talk about how we can improve the show. And, and plug in the mic. <laughs> and I'm sure there's lots of There'll opportunities. Some directions on microphone use. <laughs> yeah, lots of opportunities for improvement. So, yeah, so that's what we do on our winter hiatus. Uh, Shame we on did us. That last year, and we'll do that again this year. Uh, and so when we come back uh, in 2021, it'll be better than ever. And uh, yeah, we yeah. have some good good stuff in the mix. So uh, it's all good and. Uh, you know, as far as the microphone not being plugged in, I'm just going to blame that shit on Zach. You know. Because yeah, because Zach's not here. He's yeah, our, I mean, he's a, he's, he's our guy, technical technical guy, checks so. every little thing that we got going on. And, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Hey. I remember. I remember when he used to do when we started the new show. Okay, I can't believe. So the reality is, guys, we got a year in. I know the three of us. We got a year. We, yeah. We have a year in. Yeah, and I it's remember exciting. Uh, the first couple of months we started, he had his cue cards and his countdown. Well, and that was last stuff. year. But. No, I mean it's not. Oh, it, yeah. be when a, we kicked off, because when we yeah, kicked yeah. off, when we kicked off, because yeah, I was in right. charge of so, running all of the stuff. You know, we, oh, came, yes. we came back in January. We came back in January, so uh, you know, when we get back uh, January uh, that that week, it'll be our our one year anniversary uh, for, the, for, the, for the for the new whiskey roundtable for sure. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It's been great. So yeah, so on that winter break, it will we'll make it, take advantage of that to improve the show, and besides improving our show, I look forward to working on my album a little bit during mm -hmm. that, getting that finished, maybe even doing some songwriting for the next one. In fact, I'm in the process of writing a song right now about tortillas. Oh, okay. I, well, actually, it's more of a rap. But. It's a rap. Is it? Is it? Want? 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 I usually ignore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, should, yeah that's, that would have been a good one to ignore. But anyway, You're what's stupid. been going on? You're stupid. What's going on, like, uh, in your life, like outside? I got of the whiskey uh, round I show. got one more day of work, and then I'm um, officially retired. Oh, well, that's right! One Congratulations! More, one more yeah. next week is my last week. That's so exciting! One more week. One more week is my last work so on day. So next then, week, uh, not only is it the whiskey roundtable holiday extravaganza, right. it right. will also be your Retirement day. Retirement. Uh, my official is uh, December thirty first. Huh? Good for you. Amen. Wow, that's that's awesome. So that'll be cool. That'll be yeah. Cool. Looking forward to it. It'll be nice. We'll have a big party. We'll have a big party. Go down and say, Greggy, we have big party. We make big party. We make big party for you. 
<laughs> is there something? Is he? Is, is there something? Who knows with him? Oh, okay. Who knows with him? I, I I have seen him like five times in two weeks. He called me today. They they're doing a, they're doing some. Igor's doing some kind of ugly sweater party, Christmas party. Oh, okay. So Goran called me this morning and he says, Greggy, what you what you do tomorrow? You don't have no plans, do you?" I said, "Goran, I said I have a dinner, uh, dinner with a uh, Christmas party with friends." And he's like, oh, well, what time is that? Because he's always trying to talk me, trying to talk me out of doing what I'm doing to come yes. to his place, you know. Right. I said, I can't get out of it. I said, we've been planning this for like a month and a half. And uh, he's like, oh, well, you know, sometimes uh, parties end early and uh, <laughs> it's not too late. Uh, I think he, maybe you should come out to Schnitzelhaus and uh, hang out with Igor and his friends. They would like to have you. Doesn't Goran know you by now? No party that you go to ends early. Never ends early. Never. I was there, uh, not last week, the week before, and I we were having such a great time. And I and usually, it, and it was during the week, so I don't, I will not drink during the week. It's, I refuse to drink during the week. And, and on the weekends, I don't care because I'm home. You know? So last night was an exception. So, is what you're so saying. last night was an exception, oh, right? God, well, because it was the whiskey, the whiskey Wizard Show. Quite so. an exception, actually. But. Uh, Next thing I know, it's uh, 20 after 1 in the morning. Last night? No. Oh. No, no. This is a couple weeks ago. You forgot that part, Mark. I said that earlier. But anyway. Sorry, uh, I'm paying attention so to So I got home, and I, it was a listeners. work day. I had to be to work at 7 o'clock. Uh, it was my, my day to work, and, uh, you know, I had basically four hours. I didn't know. I had like three hours of sleep, man. Thank God I wasn't drinking because it would have been miserable. I mean, I got through. I had no really had any issues or anything. But you know, come eight nine o'clock, I'm done. You know, at that point. You know, yeah, yeah. Eight nine o'clock at night, I'm done. But uh, you even came home and took a nap though today. I did because they I left did. yesterday. Yeah. yeah. I stayed up last night till one o'clock. I sat here and finished my cigar. I was smoking a great uh, Padron cigar and. Uh, I put on some music and I just sat back and enjoyed the cigar and reminisced about uh, reminisced 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 yes and yeah and uh, you know just about uh, family and friends and you know you know people that aren't in my life anymore so that's all. Sean and I kind of got home and went straight to bed. I had to get up pretty early this morning. Make coffee. So, yeah. <laughs> Yep. That's right. <laughs> I had to get so, up early and make coffee for Shauna. <laughs> anything new with you this week, Karen? Or you just work? The same just old, work, same man. Old? It was just busy, busy, busy. So I'm you know, glad it's Friday. I had, yeah, and you know, Wednesday, Wednesday, you know, we were going to do Wednesday there, but they couldn't do Wednesday because um, of, which I won't get into because it's their business, but they had to get the place ready for us. So, that, so it can't do Wednesday, but we can do Thursday. I'm like, that's fine. We had no choice. So, turns out on Wednesday, so uh, a friend of mine in from Wisconsin, and uh, we uh, we did a big spread for for him and uh, here, and uh, you know they they left at like ten o'clock, and I, Karen was shocked because she went downstairs and the kitchen was spotless. There wasn't a, a, a dish in the sink. Trained him right. Or the or right. the dishwasher. Yes, you did them all by nice. hand. I did it all by Where'd hand. You go. Got done. Jimbo was there. I tripped over him about seven, eight times. He's like, Daddy, I, I'm trying to help you. Can you just like throw me a treat or something? Can you, you know? drop some food down here to the little guy? You know, I eat anything. So. Too funny. So I went upstairs. I went upstairs on Wednesday night. <laughs> Jimbo's at the foot of the bed, and Georgia is sleeping in my spot, and I'm just like, You got to be kidding me. So I like move Georgia over and she's pawing me, you know, she wants belly rub. I get her over <laughs> enough and I, I lay down and I'm like on one little corner of the bed. I got this like like a napkin over my shoulders. <laughs> she had the blankets, he had the but he's snoring, farting, doing all this stuff. Oh my god, that That's what dog. he does, man. That's what he does. He's such a great doggy. It's a hot mess. So who's yeah. uh, who's on yeah. So who's we on got a, a few people out there online. Steve Williams What's is up, here from from, up, from Texas. Merry Steve. Christmas, bro. Yes. Uh, Pat Patterson is out there. Patrick. He's drinking. Oh, out. Pat. Patrick. Hey. hey. Heineken Go and Lagavulin 16. Browns. Two of his staples for sure. Yep. And Jen is already tipsy. She oh, had a shit. long week as well, and uh, she finished a 
Hot of Knob Creek, mm. 25th anniversary, and now she's finishing up some Makers OHLQ wood finished Grandpa's Toddy. Oh, was he wearing underwear? She You're doing of, what to Grandpa's Toddy? What are you doing to Grandpa? <laughs> she gets the whiskey. You man. freak. She. <laughs> She knows. She's about a that. super freak. She's a super freak. She, uh-huh. she, I bet she gives good gifts. At Easy. Yeah. Easy. Where are you going? Easy. With that? going no, I don't know. But you, <laughs> did you guys get your gifts what? for each other? Are you guys all done shopping? What? We, you know for, what? We don't. We sit. Me and Karen talk about. We buy like the silliest stuff for Christmas, and I don't even want to say it because it's kind of an arrogant statement, and it's not really arrogant. It's just how it is. But. You know, we pretty much do what we want to do all year long. So it's like every day's Christmas. You right. know what I'm yeah. saying? So it comes Christmas time, we're like, well, uh, uh, what do you want for Christmas? Every year since I have known this man, what do you want for Christmas? You know what he tells me? Socks and underwear. Mm-hmm. You know why? Well, that was on my list. Yeah. Why? I'll tell you why. Because Karen has never washed any of your clothes. That's why. What are you talking about? Because I could have 30 pair of underwear, I can have 30 pair of socks, and in one wash load, I'm out of underwear and socks. <laughs> <laughs> they just disappear. <laughs> Oh, well, what so I, just saying. I asked Shauna. Honey, what, that's because I like you panting. I think you know. I think I think after she washes them, she packs them and sends them to the homeless. That's really what I think happens because every year I'm out of socks and underwear. I'm just, saying, well, how does that happen? Hopefully, she washes them first. She does. Sometimes she wears yeah. them on her head when she's yeah. in the shower, kind of get that extra clean. Run around the yard, you know, like yeah. a shower cap. But you know, it's all good. Dear Lord, Shauna, I asked Shauna what she wanted for Christmas, and she said nothing would make her happier. Than a diamond necklace, so, ah, so well, I guess I'm getting her nothing. I guess she's getting nothing. <laughs> getting nothing. <laughs> Aww. Well, Poor we got son. our Christmas gifts yeah. early from yeah, Marion, which Thank uh, you, Mary. We, we went around the table Salute. and uh, <laughs> you didn't hear us because the speaker or the, the speaker was the, off. The microphone was off. But Marion bought us gifts: Big bourbon G. glasses with our name on them. Big G, Karen Helen Keller, Doug, Doug. the Whiskey Wizard. Plus, she brought us a guest glass for the so, guest. From Maid Marion. Just so y'all are wondering what I'm drinking, I'm actually drinking a Buffalo Trace single barrel store pick. It's so. very nice. Me too. It's very nice. Yes. I think we all are. That's and I'm stuff. drinking a pass. I don't think this uh, bottle's going to last today, but anyway. Of course you are. Easy. Sorry. Sorry. Easy, Hoss. Okay, well, um, we've got a show to do. But Let's before do that, G, uh, tradition calls that we, uh, we talk about what cigar you're smoking. I am smoking uh, my cigar from Royal Havana, made for me, 660 Ecuadorian uh, Habano blend. It's uh, it's a good cigar. It's full Maduro, a very tough cigar. It's very similar to a La Flor Dominicana, like a double Legetto type cigar. It's it's pretty stout, so it's good good smoke. So Dave was kind of he was over uh, on uh, Wednesday as well because he's friends with uh, our friends as well. So he brought me a bunch of cigars, as always. So we're all Vanna Cigars, guys. Good, good guy. Dave all right, Sommer. Karen, what, what do you got going there? I am finishing the cigar that I couldn't finish last night. It is an acid Cuba Cuba. Um, got this last night at Lizardville. They do sell cigars there as well. And uh, very tasty. I haven't had one in a while. I, uh, I just want to break real quick and say... Uh, you know, which we didn't realize is a whole shit show story, but uh, we're just going to forget all that. Uh, welcome back, Cleveland Bourbon Co. Yes. Sorry, yes. sorry we yes. Uh, sorry we missed you guys. I uh, we didn't know. We didn't know. We just assumed. And uh, as they've say, always been one of our sponsors. Always but, have uh, been. exactly. And we didn't uh, realize that uh, a lot of the members didn't realize our show, our revamped show, was back on the air. Right. And uh, like they say, when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. Right, yes. so ain't that the but, truth? Uh, I, I'm glad, uh, you know, when uh, you know, a we couple weeks ago we ran guys. into the guys from the co-op, and uh, not going to mention any names, but um, brought it to our attention, and we're like, I we didn't know, so they were. 
just as shocked as I was, but that's a whole different story. But uh, anyway, it's all good. Cleveland Bourbon Co-op, man. Thanks. I'm glad you guys are. I hope you're watching. Yeah, and, we still uh, got the. I don't much. know if you can uh, see the sign we over do. there. We Let's do. see. Cleveland Bourbon Co-op. Uh, transition. It's right over Doug's uh, head over it's there. It's right. Uh, it's kind of blurry, yeah. but it's all it's right. uh, it's there. It's underneath the uh, elf. Well, we're gonna Brown's revamp. Uh, over stay. the over the holiday, we're going to be gone for four weeks. Um, Back on January twenty second, right. so next so week is our last show. We're going to of twenty twenty, right? And we're going to move some stuff around over here. So we definitely want to get our sponsors uh, visual, and uh, we're just going to keep moving forward. It's one of the things that's on the list. So we'll do our thing, man. It is a little redecorating. And we will do a little reorganizing. That's right. John Gotta Donnelly's get... with Steve. What's up, Donnelly, my boy? What's you guys happening? aren't spooning in the bed watching oh, us, are you? Oh, shit, Donnelly. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but yeah. it was just questioning. Well, you know what's cool about uh, it, it, uh, in this, the situation? So Steve and Donnelly, they hang out. Uh, Donnelly's a very good friend of mine. Love him to death. And Steve was my brother, of course. And uh, it's they'll watch the show. They'll smoke cigars. Mm -hmm. And then after the show, Donnelly goes and cooks because he is a unbelievable cook and barbecue guy. So the best ribs I've ever eaten in my life has been from John Donnelly. Donnelly was in town uh, a couple years ago, and he made, I don't know, Donnelly, you refresh my memory, maybe six or seven slabs of ribs. Oh, it was huge. I'm and, trying to uh, find the picture to put it up they, online. They were, they, you know how you know a rib is good? Is when... Nobody even wants barbecue sauce. Yeah. That's how good that rib was. So I bust his chops to tell him how terrible his food is and he sucks and this and that. And I'll teach him how to do, make a hamburger or something, you know. But a well, very, very, very smart guy. When it comes to, he's a, he's a, he should, he's like a chef, man. He's unbelievable. I want to thank your buddy Jimmy again for oh, the Colila, little bottle of Colila yep. 12. Nice. Oh, yeah. um, we we enjoy have, that over the holidays. For sure. You I have will? a sample. So you haven't stepped into it yet. No, no, no. It's it's perfect stocking stuffer. So one of one of the guys. I'm gonna give it to myself. One of the guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> you are stupid. Yeah, so, he is. <laughs> one of the guys Woo! from the Cleveland Bourbon Co-op uh, gave me a sample of a scotch that he likes and uh, uh, wanted you to try it. And I told him that was been like two months ago. So refresh my memory. I want you to take it home. And uh, he told me what it was, but I honestly don't remember. Now you've been think, tempting me a lot with, you've been talking about our, our Christmas ho or our, holiday, our holiday show. Extravaganza next week, that you have some special lined up a very in the special single malt arena. arena. Single malt arena, it's, uh, it's, it's, so they I know no my Ilo Brover will they enjoy they that. They no longer make it, I can't remember the date that they quit making the product. Uh, I was able to. It's it's not cheap. It's like three hundred bucks a bottle. I had, fell into two bottles, and uh, literally fell into two. Pretty much. <laughs> and you, uh, I just threw that out, and you guys didn't. Do you guys know what a Brovern is? A what? A, who? a bro. I said my high low Brovern, and you guys. No, what's your high low Brovern? We. I think we talked about that when Chris was on the show. But well, nobody anyway. likes Chris, but anyway, go ahead. Well, what are you talking about? No, that's just. That's what we Just call kidding, Chris, one of our members is a little verbally this challenged and he he meant to say brethren brethren and he okay. said brover so ah. we, that's what we call ourselves so I, our I hope group. I hope that you like it I know nothing about it Karen did a little history on it um, when I first bought the first bottle about a year ago it was it'll be a year ago in th this month yeah it was about a year ago and yep. I said I'd like to she's like we got to try I said I'm not opening it until I get a second bottle and we happened to stop into this liquor store. And they had it? And they had another bottle. So I wow. said, and I said to Karen before I left, I said, I want to go to this liquor store and I'm just going to cross my fingers. They have another they bottle of that. I just want to make sure. She says, what do you want? I said, I want to do it as a surprise for Doug, the Whiskey Wizard, on the show. For, for His segment has been great and uh, we want to uh, do something special for him. Right. For our last show, so oh. and I walked in the door and uh, they had a bottle on the shelf, so uh, I bought it. And actually, at the same time, that's where we ran across our drink for tonight mm -hmm. as well. Exactly. The uh, Jim Beam single barrel, hundred and eight proof. Hundred and eight proof. Yeah. So I yeah um, yeah it's I guess which we couldn't to. find it. We found 
history on the 90 proof. But 95. We didn't, 95 found, proof, but, but we I didn't find anything on the 108. Couldn't. The 108 is good. So that's the second bottle. I just bought it last Saturday. It's a little mysterious, yes. the 108. So yes. we, we killed uh, last Saturday. We ended up hanging out here with a group of people and... Uh, we uh, pretty much drank that first bottle, so that's the second bottle. Yeah, we did. We, we may have to go back and pick up another one tomorrow. I can. Uh, I don't think we have time tomorrow. Maybe Sunday. We'll see. But Karen, what do we know about the Jim Beam Single Barrel 108 Proof? What do we know about it? Uh, let me get there, Doug. Oh. I'm so off today. Okay, so last week we, when we did JTS Brown, we talked a little bit, little bit about their connection to the Beam. Beam family. The Correct. Beam family. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it is fitting that we are doing the Jim Beam Single Barrel 108 Proof this evening. So it's kind of a, a great year, and I, uh, a milestone year for Jim Beam. So they started in 1795, and that makes this bourbon 225 years old. And throughout their history, the seven generations of the Beam family have been involved either owning the distillery or being a master distiller. So I thought to pay tribute to them and their 225th anniversary, I'd talk about uh, some of the guys, the seven, the seven generations. So sure. uh, it started with Jacob Beam. Right. And his contribution. He, Jim Beam goes, kids. Jim Beam's. Jim Bean goes. Perfect. Jim. Yes, and we did that show uh, that in was, October uh, for our Halloween month. For Halloween month, yes. Uh, he started the distillery, and he used his father's whiskey recipe to distill the excess corn into a new, sweeter kind of whiskey bourbon. So, thanks to, to Jacob Bean, started the whole thing rolling. Now, 1795, 1820, he handed the distillery over to his son, David Beam. Um, and at this time in history, you couldn't go to the store and buy bottles of bourbon. Um, it could only be distributed locally. So people would take their jugs to the distillery about. and bring get... that back. <laughs> 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 and uh, and fill them up. So I do that at Heinen's a lot with their their beer. Oh. Um, anyway, <laughs> anyway, he had the foresight to know that um, things are going to change. Bourbon's really yeah. going to take off, and and I you know I got to get the distillery ready for that. So he actually enlarged the distillery for future growth, and he transitioned them from pot stills to column stills. So it allowed for continuous operation. That that's a that's a, something I've always uh, kind of wondered about, and that's maybe a future topic we can talk about. But the my impression is that you get a better quality from a pot still, even though from a production standpoint, it's not as it's not as efficient, not as not, advantageous not. for the distiller. Right. But um, but go. No, no, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. So, Please. yeah, that's. I just I've noticed that that uh, I like a lot of products that are pot still. But um, you're a fan of Willet? I, uh, the Willet. Yeah, pot yeah. I, I do like Willet, and of course, uh, that's usually how most single malts are made. I, uh, you know, Jim Beam is always even before I really drank whiskey. Um, Jim Beam, if I had to drink whiskey, Jim Beam would always be my go-to. So uh, you know, I, you know, my my taste test uh, started with uh, a friend of mine uh, and my brother. So, and I think it all started the what got me a hundred percent hooked was uh, uh, my brother. We were watching some college ball down here, me and Fresh and uh, my brother Stephen. Were you about what and, nine? Uh, I was like nine years old. <laughs> I was smoking his big stogie. But he anyway, started smoking at four. I just yeah. figured bourbon wasn't far but, behind. But uh, if I remember correctly, brother, if I'm wrong, let me know. But I, we were drinking Bullet, and uh, I, I think that started. That was one of the first ones you, yeah. And that was, uh, I think that was after the holiday. So I had Angel's Envy uh, with Joe, and uh, my brother Stephen was in town, and uh, he come down. We like sat all Sunday. For weeks, every Sunday, Saturday and Sunday, we were right downstairs here, and uh, we were watching college ball. And, and when the, uh, when the bar was actually usable. When the then. bar was usable. 
I, you know, <laughs> speaking of the bar, I just, I do, I do marble, and it's really, I have a really good view from where I sit. Is that yeah. why you're because always drooling? I, I mean, I look over at G, and then just behind him is, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, heavenly, heavenly spirits. Um, okay. the, a, a nice collection of the things I'm most fond of. And, well, uh, I'll, I'll, speaking of pure pot still and all those things, I have some friends it. that are coming over as soon as we're done with the show for the year. Uh, we're going to strip that down. We have to do an inventory. Absolutely. That'll be interesting, yeah. and that I will take even, that will take some time. I think that's why we're off. For uh, like four yeah, months. that's another reason we're off mm -hmm. for a month because we got to do inventory here. Right. But no, I, it's it's great. It's always great to. I could just imagine what that insurance bill is going to be. Yeah. Anywho, so so, um, so back, back to Jim Beam, um, David Beam, who took over in 1820, he renamed the bourbon Old Tub to match the name of the distillery. And I think we did Old Tub. Yeah, on, we did a whole discussion on that. On, um, yeah. Piece, but, uh, so that was David Beam's contribution. Um, go go check our. Show previous show, um, sure. yeah, from April April twenty fourth. So you can Don check just, that out I and no the Jacob Beam one. Uh, oh, see, I thought you were that good. I just was rolling with it. Yeah. <laughs> I should have. I wasn't. Should let you think it that, was. But, it was no. just a couple couple weeks back, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, still going, still Good going. Month. So that was. Uh, let's see. We started with Jacob. We went to David. Then in eighteen seventy four, David Beam, the third generation, took over the distillery. His contribution was he took advantage of the railroads that were near nearby to the distillery, um, and he started shipping Old Tub and started to transform the bourbon into a national brand. So that was David M. Beam's uh, contribution. 1894, James Beauregard. I love that name. Anyway, James Beauregard Beam. Who was known as That's Jim... That's not a Southern guy. No. He was known as Jim Beam to his friends. He His contribution, he expanded the distillery and developed some very rigorous standards and productions for quality for the bourbon. Um, and then Prohibition hit during his time there. Um, he tried his hand at farming, some little things, whatever. Um, but one of the most notable things that happened is his daughter, Margaret, got married during this time. What? And who did she marry? We're talking about incestuous, incestuous relationships. Incestuous uh, bourbon relationships. One, one of the Hatfields or the McCoys. She married Frederick Booker No. Oh, shit. Who knew? Yeah. Who know? Huh? Yeah, Booker <laughs> No is a, quite a guy in the so. bourbon distilling world. And we will talk about that in the future. Yes, we will. We're doing so. So um, his name will come. That that name will come up later as I'm going through this. Um, but in 1933, prohibition was o over. Jim Beam was 70 years old, and with the help of his friends and family, he rebuilt the distillery. And in 1935, the first batch of post prohibition bourbon was ready, and he sold the bottle under the name Colonel James B. Beam bourbon because actually at the time they lost the rights to the name old tub um, I'm not sure why uh, but they did lose the rights to the name old tub and one of the things that he did is he wanted to make sure that Jim Beam stayed for years and years to come so what he would do is he would bring home a jug of his yeast strain every weekend just in case something happened to the oh yeah oh yeah I know that the they oh no yeah they, all right makes sense makes a lot sense. of the sure. lot of those guys Eddie Russell keeps Eddie Russell um, yeah. their yeast strain always has some of it in his home refrigerator just in case just, just in, in case. case you never so know as, never know as we've talked about when we did the whiskey wizard episode on on yeast mm -hmm. right and the mash is that that is probably one of the most important things to a distiller is that yeast strain that they've cultivated and they can very easily get out of whack and then suddenly the doesn't matter what else you're doing if if the yeast goes bad you're in trouble exactly yep 
Exactly. Uh, but that's a tradition. Uh, his great grandson, who is now working, uh, he still brings home the East every weekend. So, Jim Beam will be safe, guys. Yes, indeed. 1935, we're moving on. So, uh, Jim Beam's son, T. Jeremiah, he refounded, renamed the distillery the Jim B. Beam Distilling Company um, in honor of his father, Jim Beam. He actually officially took over in 1946. His father, claim to... Father, grandfather. Father? His father was Jim Beam. Okay, this, I'm sorry. this is uh, T. Jeremiah Beam. Gotcha, sorry. I know you're cool. Come on, we went through this on that. Hey, I, my, my attention span is about half a second. About the size of your penis? <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, that was obnoxious. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, that's good. Okay, I'm, I'm glad sorry. I got you those extra couple of beers. I'm glad you did, too. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. That's all I have to say, Negro. Let's go. <laughs> Move on. Nothing to see here. Move along. Go ahead. Okay, so anyway, his claim to fame was that he he was over the distillery when World War II hit, and his claim to fame is he would ship the um, beam to the servicemen that were overseas fighting the war in World War II, which allowed Jim Beam to go from national to global. So that was his important contribution. Then we are up to 1960. So this is where um, I told you that uh, whose son, Jim Beam's daughter, oh. married Booker No. Booker No right. then came in. And of course, one of the high end whiskeys everybody knows is Booker's, right? right? Exactly. That's, that's who that comes from. Yep, he released that in 1987, and it was the first small batch bourbon from Jim Beam. And it was $35 a bottle, which... Pretty dear in 1980, what? 1987, that's 87. equal to that, about, they said about $73. Right, I'll say that, that's big 87, man, that was a good year. I, think I don't back, remember it much. Lost your virginity? Yeah, what happened? That's like, you lost your virginity? What, what happened in 87? No. <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. Dad. No, you're Just, cool. No, no, it was good. <laughs> I embarrassed him. Good music. Is he t oh, he's turning he's red. All red. Look at him. He, he did lose it in 1987. Uh, Shauna. Damn it. No. That goat never I talked to him again. In <laughs> I met Shauna in 1988. <laughs> that goat's like, no. That's, Doug, you're that's bad. Not that's not it. <laughs> Where's the party? <laughs> Okay, are we doing some tasting here? No, I, I, I got Oh, paid. we're not done, bitch. No. <laughs> Darn it. It's about time to get on to the tasting. All right, we're almost done. We're almost done. So, um, Go ahead, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, he introduced Jim Beam Black in 1978. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay, God. so that was his contribution. Jim Beam Black and Booker's. And then in 1992, here's the seventh generation, so we're almost done here, Doug. Uh, Booker was succeeded by his son, who is still the master distiller, uh, Frederick Booker No the no, Third. Um, when he came in he, in 2005, they filled the 10 millionth barrel of wow. Jim Beam. Wow. And, he got into the experimenting with different types of bourbon. So it uh, started in 2009. He released the Red Stag, which is a black cherry liqueur mm -hmm. infused Jim Beam. Mm -hmm. He also did in 2011, he did the Devil's Cut. Mm -hmm. 2012, Jim Beam Black, which is one of your favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, it won a gold medal at the San Francisco World Spirits competition that year. And then in 2013, he released uh, the Signature Craft 12-Year and Jim Beam's Distiller's Masterpiece. Yep. You familiar with that one? I am. Okay. 2015, Jim Beam Apple. And then in 2016, uh, he did the Jim Beam Double Oak, which is another one of your Very favorites. good. Very good. So... Um, that brings yeah. us to what we are drinking this I just wanted to say, evening. like, if you said to a Scotsman, I'm, I'm Booker No. the Third, 
they would say, well, then which one are you? What do you mean? I don't, I don't even get that. I, I missed it. What is it? Well, you know, Scott, Scotch Brogue dialect. No, I'm, anyway, if I'm Booker No the Third, they would say, then which one are you? You know, you're wah, not the, wah, you're, wah. you're not the third? No, I mean. <laughs> oh, you're not. Like, oh, not? not the, that's what they, you know, okay. they say. Uh, not. not. They say, no, I'm. It's all good, Doug. That's not, <laughs> every once that's in a while. That's no a good thing. Was it that's the goat no joke that threw you up? <laughs> no, it's just... Uh, every once in a while. Yeah. Hey, my microphone I'm was off when to, we started the trying show. To you bring it the back no to joke. scotch every once in a while. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So we've got... We've so got, something, we, to, we've got something to taste. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, we are doing... <laughs> the one... You make me forget. Jim Beam Single, single Barrel, barrel. 108... Proof. That's right. So this specific bottle is barrel number JB 0003249055. And what they say... That um, means there's a lot of barrels, but... Um, yes, there are. And they say you, that the barrels of bourbon are like snowflakes. No I, two are ever the same. And I don't yeah. think that there's that many single barrel releases. That's just that that was the number of that particular barrel that that this bottle uh, reflects that we're having so exactly. that uh yeah i I, say yeah, that? I saw yeah. that last week correct and, i think so and uh reflex i don't sounds know. right i had to grab a couple bottles it I was guess. a late night last night for <laughs> me as well Amen. well it, w- it wasn't a late night but it started early and, and it felt late, late. yes <laughs> Hey, you can't drink all day if you don't well, start hey, early. We do Amen. it for the show. We took one for the show last night, folks. So next Literally. week, you'll uh, you'll see, you'll you'll understand when you watch next week's show. I'm going to be anxious to see the uh, edit on that. I'm going to see. I, yeah, I don't Zach's know got a little it. work to do. He's Just got a lot. Of work had, to I think do. our I think our little <laughs> segment for the Whiskey Whistler is about 53 minutes. Ooh. Um, took me about 45 minutes to upload it to him. So. Oh Happy editing, Zach. Well, I think uh, I next say. week, I think majority of the show is going to, is, you know, we're going to do our, a quick tasting, so to say, and then the rest of the show, it will be uh, the Whiskey Wizard. Really. I, I do want to make a special shout out to Anthony Abrahams, who is watching uh, one of my High Low Brogan for the first time tonight. Okay. Welcome. So, awesome. Welcome. So, Welcome. Uh, yeah. Hope you're enjoying excited it. Excited to have Anthony with us tonight. So. Absolutely. We always like he's, having he's new a people bit of join a, us. Single malt only kind of guy, but but any but uh, we'll break him down like we yeah. Do we do don't let the so. goat joke scare you away. Don't let the Anthony, goat jokes. all no, good. You'll never convert Anthony in any way to the goats. He's made his oh, decisions, and he's just that kind of guy. So gotcha. But uh, thank you. We're Anthony happy these with us, regardless. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right, absolutely. let's taste this thing. Pass it let's on. Let's pass this out. Yes, yeah, it's a lot easier to pass on. out when you've got uh, no, no blindfold on. No blindfold on. We did yesterday. All right, I'm gonna put this cigar down. All right, I'm gonna have me a little taste I'm take of. Take a water. Take a little sip of water. Oof. Uh, did I take your water? You did, but that's no big deal. You didn't drink out of it. It's all good. Mm. I don't know where that mouth has been. Okay. So let's go in on the nose, guys. What do we think? What are you okay. giggling about, like the school girl? Oh, right Anthony. He's yeah. texting you. Aww. Aww. Don't be scurred. You can put it on the on the Facebook or the uh, on the scroll. No, I YouTube can't. Scroll. Okay, let's just. Mm. 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 Nice. Actually, very. I I get lots little, of, I get some cherry out of this, kids. Lots of cherry, lots of caramel, and your typical bourbon vanilla. But there's something else going on there, like a. I get light oak. Like a get oak. Definitely get some bit. oakiness yeah. and almost like a cookie dough or. I go with some cookie dough. Some sugar cookies or yeah, yeah. I go with that. You know what? And and not to kind of give away next week's show too much, but when I had the blindfold down, my nose was a lot more perceptive than it is. I'm looking it does. at it, and I you know. That's the other reason I I didn't me- I meant to mention that. Uh, last night when we did did that, but that's the other reason for for the blindfold. So I think it does make your sense of smell and taste a little more acute because 
That's I, what happens. I just, when I you just don't want have you to know them. that I got everyone right. <laughs> sure he did, and we'll see that <laughs> next week. I was right on. I don't know what you were on, but you were on something. It's probably all the, the 30 drinks before we started the show. <laughs> Which happens. I warned you against, but that's okay. Hey, but I was too. Hey, Never mind. You know, anyway, I'm just, not giving it away. We're doing science. It was still science, right? Yeah, that's, that's right. what we're all about here on the Whiskey Roundtable. Good whiskey science. And um, so that's what I get. I get uh, very typical um, kinds of bourbon stuff, right? Some brown sugar. Yeah. Um, Typical I get your yet. cherries a little bit. Some dark. There's a little mm-hmm. bit of dark fruit. That's probably. I could go with cherries, but I definitely get that kind of sugar cookie mm-hmm. kind of a little bit of a doughiness. I, I, I could see I that, do. yeah. I and see. I can see the dark fruit as well. A lot of heavy oak for me. Do you uh, do you have anything on the nose or no? I know this was a hard thing to um, find. You know what? I I didn't. I didn't really find anything on the nose, but what I took was from the Jim Beam website itself on the 95. Gotcha. So, you know, 13 proof difference, different barrels, whatever. Um, they described the nose, rich, oaky vanilla with light spiciness. So I could... I agree with that. I could see that. I yeah. agree with that, 100%. Absolutely. Uh, Stephen Williams says, keep it coming. I'm just <laughs> not sure what he's talking about there, but... Okay. You want us to send you <laughs> some we'll do goats? Our best. Yeah. We'll do our best. <laughs> okay, yeah. so uh, let's, t- let's taste, shall let's, we? Let's give it a shot. Go in and do this. Oh man! Oh, mm. Anthony, Ooh. you would love this. Wow, smooth, 108 proof. It's smooth. It, yeah. Light, light well, well, spice. I light mean, spice. There's some heat there, but it's not 108. Heat. No, and it doesn't stay with you either. Yeah, no, it's really ephemeral kind of. Don't evaporate. use big words around me, Doug. I it evaporates gonna... quickly. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not getting a a long finish, but I'm I'm knocking on the door a long finish. It does stay with you, but the spiciness doesn't. The the heat is there, and then it boom. Go, it go, yeah, the uh, the aftertaste is fantastic. I get a little pepper. Yeah, some some black pepper for sure. Maybe even some white pepper. Get some holiday spice out of there. A little cinnamon. Yes. Yeah. So mm. very nice. Huh? Cinnamon. You, know? you yeah, said it's that. A good, I get it. Yeah, it's cinnamon. Cookie dough. A little bit of a maybe not a bad Christmas drink. Yeah. It's uh, it's really good. It is really good. Well, I'm you know pleasantly surprised. So I wonder, this is a limited edition, Greg. I don't know if it's a limited edition. I just we went to the store to get on a fluke. On a fluke, I wanted to just see if they had that other bottle, and uh, I was looking at the. They were taking care of us, but they were busy, so I walked over to because when you walk in the door, all their scotch is they have an un believable inventory of scotch I mean stuff that is obsolete stuff you can't get anymore and they had I mean just Ooh. and they always have they always have and uh, they were busy the guy was waiting on us and he was busy. I said hey we're gonna be here for a minute just do your thing you know blah 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 and uh, why he was doing that I walked over to the bourbon selection and none of all their whiskeys are behind the counter so you can't just go pull something off the shelf right and uh, I looked, and I was like, I see Jim Beam, and I could see single barrel 108. And I was like, so things died down. I stood there, and he come walking over to, to, uh, he, you know, to, to see what else I wanted. I go, is that Jim Beam product? He says, yeah. I says, that, is my reading that right, single barrel 108? He says, yeah. yeah, we just got it in. I said... And I, I tried to pull it up on the Ohio liquor, and it, it does it won't come up. And I said, I'll take two bottles of that. Mm. He's like, okay. So he grabbed me two bottles. We we drank one last Saturday. We came back, and, it, and it, they had the bottle that that I was looking for, the scotch. And I bought that, and uh, I took two bottles the of scotch that. scotch we're doing next week? The scotch we're doing next week. So uh, I grabbed two of those, and uh, we, we went through three-fourths of that bottle, and then I gave the rest of it to uh, Workout Jeff. I wanted him to try it. And uh, I said, that's what I want to do for the show next week. So here we are today, man. It's really, really good. I like it. 
So Jeff Abrams said, "What about a couple drops of distilled H two O?" So I just, Ooh. yeah, I went over and uh, dropped in a couple. Jeff, aka Bones. Okay. Um, so I went over, grabbed some water, and dropped a couple drops in there. Man, I, I hate doing that. I hate. No, it. I. You know, I, I hate doing that. I'm gonna do it. I like just, doing it because uh, I like to see how it differs. Well, for a 108 proof, gee, that's not a bad. I think uh, I think Jeff's on to something. This we goes against give everything I believe in. No, I'm telling you, it that was more than a few drops. But once you get over 105, you should always. I think that's my rule. You should always test. To me, adding the water opened it up and made it okay. more peppery. You all you already get more on the nose with a few drops of water. Ah, wow! It, oh. it didn't kill it. No, it, it the the nose is uh, completely different. It opened, yeah, it, it did, did. In, a, in a good way, in a good way. Yes, I'm not about diluting okay. diluting a uh, proof, so to say. No. All right, I'm gonna try it, kids. Oh my god! Right? I get I, I yeah. Did it not open it up? Wow. I get more of the... A ton, more of the can, ton of candy. Yeah. A ton of candy. I get a lot more of the... Wow. Nice call, Jeff. I, you said it's a blind call. Thank you, Helen Keller. Understands. Yes. Because um, he's wow. not drinking it, but it, great suggestion. Wow. It really opened up the, that for Jeff you guys. Jeff is Anthony's nice. brother, I'll be also I'm, a Scotch guy, but, you know... I'll be honest with they you. They know whiskey. They know what... 90%... I'm sorry, Doug. 90% yeah. of the time, I add water... I mean, yeah, it's it's basically not even a maybe a half a tablespoon, table, just a yeah, teaspoon. Um, Holy shit! And I'm not a fan of doing that because ninety percent of the time, I don't like it with a little bit of water in it. And uh, I have to say, uh, that uh, that one little ice cube, if you will, um, or a half a teaspoon of water is uh, it's a whole different flavor, man. It really but it did, in it your did. opinion, did it open up and just it make did. it more? It did. Like, That's what, I mean, it's it's like a flower bloomed or something. It, uh, I don't want to compare it to any other whiskeys, but um, it definitely is uh, candy all the way, all the way. It's great. It's very good. And I get like where you said cinnamon before yeah. we added the water. I get more cinnamon out of it now. Mm, it's really good. What do you do? Anything on the palate or no? Oh, let me go. So again, this is the 95 that uh, I did get the notes from off of Jim Beam. Jim Beam's website. Damn. Uh, the palette, they say it's well-balanced. Attributes of oak, vanilla, and caramel. Um, and, and I would think uh, that's probably that's more. Older. But that's it's older. probably more on the 95 because it's right, more tea. I understand. Um, I don't get the, the, the caramel vanilla sweetness. We're, we're running the notes off the 95 because there is no information on this 108. Any, even on Jim Beam's website, there's no 108 there's no info. on there, period. And, and I found there so. were some other blogs and some other sites that had, had done their opinion of it, but um, I try to get from reputable sure. sources. Sure. And you know, not that they're not. Everybody's palate's different. So. Um, but I try to get something, you know, a little bit more... Factual? Sure. Absolutely. Sure. Anyway, right. I'm going to have to take that phone away from you because you're having way too much fun on well, the I'm, side I'm, I'm, a I'm just responding to our, our, our guests out here. On your phone? What, what you got on your phone there, Doug? Yeah, Doug, what do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Whiskey porn? You what buying, you uh, you buying, you, you setting things up to buy that diamond necklace for huh? Shauna? Oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> I got to buy my goat something too. Probably a bale of hay. <laughs> Anything she wants. Anything she wants. Vaseline. Some Vaseline. <laughs> Holy hell. Jim Beam flavored, of course. <laughs> Poor dog. You guys. He's like, every time he drives home, he's like, what the hell? Did I what did I do? Why did you why why commit to this shit? I drive all the way out God here for this freaking beaten up. Anyway. We love you, Doug. I know. If we didn't, can yeah. you imagine what we'd be saying oh, to yes, you? Oh, yes, right. Damn, so... Any who's it's. Um, so, should we get to the ratings? Oh, that's what we do next, yes. Right. It's typically Big what G. we do. Big G. As tradition, you go first. Uh, I'm going to give it a, a 3.9. <gasps> oh, 
No! I'm going to give it a 3-9. Tres. Punto. Uh, uh, Ruto. Cuevo. Uh, Cuevo. Huh? Gumizigami? Si, sí, se puede conseguir más que lo que se puede pagar. Ah. You didn't say oh, anything. Say you just like to start speaking in tongues, no, didn't you? No, Gumizigami is actually... Uh, no, I know what that means. I met your grandmother. <laughs> Oh, why get my daughter's can tell you <laughs> what she, I said. She taught me what it meant. Oh. And Cameron. <laughs> Woo. It's, a, it's Italian. I'm, <laughs> I'm speaking Italian. <laughs> so three point nine for G out of our, on our scale of uh, one to five. One to five. Um, that's Karen, a, what do you got? That's a great score. Um, it is. Dang, you know I really. The only reason I went. I'm sorry, Karen. No. The only reason I went with that. I apologize. The only reason I went with that is uh, uh, your friend. Uh, this is something you can drink out of the bottle, and it's 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 better in a glass. It's though. better. I understand. I, oh, you are stupid. Something you can drink <laughs> right out of the bottle. The bottle's a glass. <laughs> and it is just putting of- that little bit of water in there. Uh, it's a whole different drink, and it's it's fantastic. I so, like it. So no, I, it was um, doesn't always work. But that's it that's a good, I mean it's a good uh, point because, and then Jeff Abrahams brought this up about putting the water in high proof spirits. I don't care whether it's Scotch or Irish whiskey or bourbon rye. It, if it's always good, I think with a, I think with a high proof spirit to put a little bit of, of water in there and see what it does. It doesn't always improve it, but often it, it doesn't. does. It doesn't most. Of- I, I I I contradict that. Look that at you. Now look, we talked about we talked about go ahead. Um, go ahead. We talked about this in the past. Um, when they do tastings and nosings, nosings particularly on whiskeys, a lot of times they'll dilute it 50-50, Believe it or not, uh, I believe that. And, I believe that. And you can, and I did this on one of the whiskey wizards on nosing, and you can pick out more, actually more flavor elements. When it's 50 50 diluted with water. Now, yeah, you don't want to drink that, but you nose it first with that 50 50 mix. You can actually pick out more of those. But it kind of detons the uh, proof at the same time. Well, no, you don't drink that. I'm just saying. That's just for the nose, uh-oh. so you but, open it up a little bit. Yeah. And then you, then, no, yeah, but I'm just saying, but then when you have a high proof spirit, you put a few drops of, of water in there and you compare it. You always want to drink it. I, I like to drink it straight first. I do too. Uh, full, full proof, and then but then try it with a little bit of water and see what happens. Sometimes you you pick up a lot more than you did straight. Gotcha. Okay. Straight proof. Or, I get you. No, yeah. Get no, you. that sure. makes sense. That makes, makes total sense. sense. Absolutely. Yeah. So okay, I I have to ask. I think you, you just experienced that. I, yeah. Okay, you're right. I agree with you. I have to ask you. So you, you gave it a three point nine. I'm curious what you would have scored it had you not put the water in it. I probably would have did a three seven. Okay, so I, the water. I like, I like oh. the proof. I like the proof, but the reason I went with the three point nine is that I can drink this out of that bottle and be happy, or I can add a little teaspoon, uh, half a teaspoon, if you will, uh, of water, and it's uh, it 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 doesn't disappoint. It's even better with that little bit of water. Again, that little bit of water will cut. A little bit of the proof. How much? I don't know. I'm no scientist, but at the end of the day, uh, it's good either way. So I, I'm happy with that. In my personal opinion, I because most of the time I add water, I'm totally disappointed, and uh, this time I am not disappointed. So that's why I gave it the score. I gave it. Does that make sense, kids? All right. Well, I yeah. I, I mean. It's That's a great. multitasker. There you go. <laughs> Karen, your score now. That's where we are. Um, so I was a little surprised, Greg, when you started out with three. I was worried you were going to give it a little uh, lower score, but 3.9 is very... On the Whiskey uh, Round Table system? That's it's a pretty very good, impressive. Sc- very impressive score. Very impressive. But you you profess to be a bit of a Jim Beam I'm a fan. a huge so. Jim Beam fan. And Huge. you can't argue with the heritage there. Right. The, the the what's the word I'm looking for? I can't the the um, the history the the distilling process. No, no. Sounds it, like sounds like <laughs> heritage. Could be uh, two plus pedigree. Two. Pedigree. Okay, okay, okay. I knew okay. that. Okay, 
Yeah. I was just playing. There we go. Um, no, I totally agree. I totally agree with you. Um, reading the history, love how they have kept it in the family right. for 225 years. Totally amazing. This, for 108 proof, I've come a long way from my blind picking and my hair, Helen Keller days. I'm going to go with a 4.0. Oh, shit. Whoa. Oh. I, I really, Didn't see that really enjoy it. Me neither. I really, really enjoy this. It's good stuff, kids. It is good stuff. If this don't make uh, your pants fall down, nothing will. Whiskey Wizard's <laughs> gone with a... Uh, uh, very solid 3.6 on this. All right, all right. Um, so we're still all, a good score. We're, we're, all um, the, we're all on the table. Look, here, uh, my thing with Jim Beam, their, their mainstay, as everybody knows, is their, their regular Jim Beam sits on the bar, uh, goes into mixed drinks, everybody knows it, high volume product. And that's been their mainstay. Sure. And they really haven't ventured and, and, a and lot the, the into premium. The pricing is perfect. They haven't ventured a lot into premium whiskeys. And um, so I appreciate the effort on this. I think they they did an admirable job of sure. stepping out, um, picking some uh, barrels out of their stock and that they would, they would uh, know would be the best, probably as we talked, in the center of the warehouse. Sure. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's it's very good. I was actually impressed with with this selection. So absolutely. Now let I me did. ask you the same. I'm sorry. No, Eric. go ahead. Go ahead. I, I ask you the same question. Did adding water to it influence your score at all? No, oh, I. Yes, it did. I I did up I did up my opinion after a few drops of water. It did open up a lot. I got a lot more complexity out of it. And I enjoyed it more. So you think that raised it a little bit yeah, just by adding the water? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. we had the same same experience. For me. Yeah, I, I would agree. And, you know, I, I look at stuff when I'm trying to score stuff as well. It's like, would you put this in a mix or would you drink it by itself? I would never put this in a mix. I think it I would. I wouldn't either. Uh, for me, it's both. Well, the only thing it's I would... For, the it's only both thing, for me. The only thing I would mix it if I was making a Manhattan or an old-fashioned, so to say... Uh, you know, so I, I, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of torn because, you know, I would like to get a couple more of those, uh, but I don't really want, know if I want to take the drive tomorrow. I will. But uh, that would be East great because uh, tomorrow's party <laughs> tomorrow's party is Manhattan party, so. Um, I like Manhattan. Know, it's, uh, There's a party you know, tomorrow? So we're, we have a dinner party, or a Christmas party tomorrow. Obviously. But anyway, um. Some people aren't. Jim Beam it. products are always, their, their price point is always on the lower end, so to say, as a compliment. Right. Um, you know, my one of my favorite Jim Beam is Distiller's Cut, which yeah. they don't yeah. make anymore. Okay. Uh, I stocked up because I knew they were, and then you won't find it on any shelf anymore. Okay. You won't even find it on any website anymore. Oh, you're kidding. You didn't see it on your thing when you scrolled through, did you? I sure so, didn't. Yeah, that's right. That's why I was so, just going back to Distiller's Cut. You. Distiller's Cut is, you know, I go back to the story about Jim being black, and that's why I have that on the wall, aged eight years. Um, when I took that to a cigar get together and I brought Jim being black, and everybody was had their high dollar scotches and bourbons, and they, they laughed at me. And I said, that's all right. You don't have to drink it. I brought it for myself. Well, at the end of the day, now all of those people that called me out have a bottle of Jim Beam Black. It's a fantastic product. Distiller's Cut, fantastic. Double Oak, fantastic. Um, this was a surprise to me. This was, in my opinion, a in my opinion right now, in my personal opinion for the state of Ohio, because you can't even find it on the Ohio liquor, I'm going to say this is kind of a unicorn bottle right now. Okay? Because I don't know anybody that has this. Okay? So, um... It's a great product. The price point is, I, I want to say it's right around 30 bucks. 30, 30 40 bucks, yeah. I don't mm -hmm. think it's quite 40 I want to say it's right around well, $30. I think but it's 30 and you found it on the <coughs> website for some 40s, so, but that might be like shipping. Yeah, and, yeah you know. secondary pricing, so to say. But um, I, I'm going to say it drinks like a 45 to $50 bottle at 108 I mean, proof. 
108 proof, and it, it's to me, it's not hot. It's not. No, it's, it's unbelievable. Well, I would say um, the next time we do another tasting event, well, not to give anything away, but for the Whiskey Wizard, maybe this is one of the ones that are on there. Cause okay. Yeah, we'll absolutely. Put our um, taste to the metal. Okay. All right, kids, listen. Wait. Hope. Whiskey what? Wizard. Whiskey Wizard. <laughs> time for the, time. I know you've all been waiting for this, uh, so it's time for the Whiskey Wizard, and uh, we'll see you guys in a few minutes. All right. Yeah, we got a special wizard. So a special uh, wizard about one of our good friends at Char. My Buffalo Trace single barrel. While you guys are watching. All right, hang tight, kids. Whiskey Wizard. <laughs> It's the Whiskey Wizard! Hello and welcome to the Whiskey Wizard, where we say that whiskey making takes scientific knowledge, an artisan's skill and dedication, and a bit of the wizard's alchemy of light, air, earth, and fire. Okay, tonight we're going to take a look at the first in an ongoing effort to feature some of the good whiskey establishments that are out there. We don't really know when everything will be totally back to normal, but there will be a time soon when we'll all doff our face coverings, toss them in the trash, and that hopefully most of this will fade into being a distant memory never to be repeated. And we will be more eager than ever to celebrate good whiskey with our friends and even in groups potentially larger than 10 people. And of course, particularly now, we need to support these worthy whiskey friendly establishments out there in our communities. So in this segment, I want to start in our backyard by talking about Char Whiskey Bar and Grill, located in Rocky River, Ohio, right here in the Cleveland area. Char is a great little whiskey bar with a fantastic, airy, clean vibe, bringing a keen, solid focus on great whiskey enjoyment. Char is located at 19337 Detroit Road in Rocky River. That's 44116. Back in late October, my kids were in town and they took us out for a surprise special evening that started at Char. We originally thought we were going to a Halloween party, so the kids made us change. Turns out it was a surprise for Shauna to honor her recently departed mother, Dorothy, on what would have been her birthday. Anyway, the kids designed it such that the evening would begin at Char for drinks and appetizers. I'd never been there as we live in Strongsville, but I'm glad this was the plan. What a perfect spot to sit for a spell and unwind in a relaxing environment, obviously designed for those of us who have an appreciation for whiskey. We got there after most of the day's football was over, so it wasn't too crowded. This offered me a better opportunity to look around and ask our waitress about the establishment. The scotch selection was a tad sparse, however, where American whiskey is concerned, the selection was excellent. You could find anything from Angel's Envy to Michter's to Weller's. And there were some top shelf selections for when those special occasions arrived. In fact, Char has over 250 whiskeys to choose from. Here's a look at their current extensive list. As you can all see, it's quite acceptable to any appreciator of the water of life, I should think. According to Gabe Zeller, one of the owners of Char, the whiskey bar was a concept that he originally wanted to open in Sandusky, Ohio back in 2014. He said we never got an opportunity to do it there, but an opportunity to open it in Rocky River happened in the summer of 2019 when the current space was made available. Gabe says his interest in whiskey started around 2013. He said, I was tired of drinking beer and started sipping different whiskeys. My best friend and business partner in char, Patrick O'Hara, was my neighbor at the time and he was into cigars. So we would meet up about once a month and sip and smoke. Gabe says his favorite whiskeys currently include Sazerac Rye, Weller Antique 107, Barter House, and Masterson's 10-Year Rye. Gabe told me his vision for Char is simply to be a neighborhood place to meet up with friends, sip whiskey, and eat delicious food. 
And he added that Char is currently a favorite date night spot for the local community. I asked about the unfortunate timing, you know, opening last year right before the pandemic hit. He said, yeah, but we take COVID very seriously and have implemented all the precautions to provide a safe environment for staff and customers. He added that keeping up with the new regulations is paramount to their future success during this difficult time for restaurants. Gabe runs Char with the help of his wife, Julie, who handles the cocktail menu amongst other management functions, while Gabe also manages their food menu. They also have some other restaurants that operate and are apparently opening up a new Mexican restaurant in Ohio City that will still have about 50 whiskeys on the menu, according to Gabe. He explained that Char started a whiskey club in February of 2019. He admits that regular group events will have to wait until the pandemic restrictions have been lifted. However, he says they do Zoom whiskey tastings with reps from various companies for their whiskey club. But again, he lamented, many of the fun things we had planned to do for our club members and customers is currently on hold. He did say that on December 10th, Char is featuring a special tasting event for club members, tasting Remus Repeal Reserve batches two, three, and four. You come in and pick your flight, go on home and join the Zoom call tasting experience which includes a rep from the distillery. Pretty cool. Gabe told me Wednesdays are Whiskey Wednesdays, where you get specials on select two ounce pours and they can be converted to cocktails for no extra charge. Happy hour is Monday through Friday, four to 6 p.m. And Char also carries a nice selection of craft beers on draft, as well as a friendly wine selection. And we should mention the food, fantastic. There is a solid range of offerings from appetizers to delicious entrees and desserts. Char is really a bit of a steakhouse, truth be told, even though not formally billed as such. Gabe claims you're going to get that same, maybe better, high quality cut of beef, but without paying the fancy steakhouse prices. Oh, and Char currently offers 21 different whiskey flights to choose from. And if you prefer to do takeout these days, everything they offer can be ordered to go. And that includes any of their drinks and flights. Just call ahead and tell them the Whiskey Roundtable sent you. So as the holiday season winds into full gear, take a break from the shopping and treat your significant or some of your friends to a relaxing spell celebrating with quality whiskeys. Follow that up with a scrumptious meal that won't disappoint and, well, you've got yourself a memorable time happening. Remember, if you feel more inclined creating that memorable time at home, you can also order it all as takeout. Again, Char is located at 19337 Detroit Road in Rocky River. Again, that's 19337 Detroit Road, Rocky River. Look them up online for more info. At the Whiskey Roundtable, we encourage all of our viewing family to support their local establishments, especially in these unique and often trying times. This is Douglas Dunbar, the Whiskey Wizard for the Whiskey Roundtable. Slanjava, happy holidays. And now, back to the live show. From this... There you go. All right, Dougie, Dougie, Doug. Okay, so another whiskey wizard in the can. Okay. Where did, you, you, are you talking about the goats again? <laughs> no. <laughs> Doug, I love you. <laughs> Take me to charge. How come you never called me? <laughs> but, uh, hey, yeah, great place. Um, <laughs> Obviously, I did. I did enjoy it a lot, and thanks to my kids for taking us there. But um, yeah, uh, Gabe and Julie were great, and you know, talking to us about uh, what they're doing there at Char, and, and hopefully, we get all this COVID behind us, and people can really just start going out again and really enjoying themselves. Sure. And I look forward to doing that. Mm -hmm. um, 
based on what we did last night. I'd love to see us do one of those tasting events at Char and that'd be great. You know, just sure. based on how nice those folks are there, I'm sure they would be be happy well, to accommodate us sure. uh, for one of those events. So. I, uh, Lizardville was uh, over the top for sure, in my personal opinion. Yeah, um, they, we, I mean, you, know, you want to talk about the red carpet treatment? We got it. So. Yeah, it was great. Last night was great, and you'll see. You guys will all see that on next week's show. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, but I'm looking forward to you know doing some more of that again. Uh, we'll figure out a new strategy for the next one. Uh, you know, last night was uh, the starting point, and then uh, I'm sure places like Char will uh, figure into that. So. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, my brother Stephen and Donnelly, uh, yeah, Manhattan. Steve makes a great Manhattan. Donnelly never had yes. your Manhattan because, uh, you know, you're scared. But uh, Steve would like that, you to hold that bottle up to the camera. Absolutely. And uh, Jennifer Box, thanks for being on my side, girlfriend. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, a little bit down. All right, there you go. So it's 108 proof. It's a, it's dark. I mean, it looks really dark in that. It does. Picture. It almost looks like a four char to me, but I, it, it's probably a three. But it's pretty dark. Definitely dark. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Uh, fantastic, uh, Steve. I, I don't know if they get it there in Texas, but if you can get your hands on it, it's get definitely it. a fine. There uh, it is. I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll grab a few bottles, Steve. Uh, if, if you ever come back in town in the next 10 years and you'll have something to take home. But uh, what Steve makes a great... Did you just invite him back? Oh, did I do that? Oh, shit. Damn it. Strike that. Where's the editor? All right. Steve, if you're ever... Zach? If, you ever, have, have Zach if you're ever passing by North Carolina, I'll throw a bottle to you. No. Steve, <laughs> Steve my phone is blowing up. Oh, my God. My phone is blowing up. It's always blowing up. So... Uh, Anyway. anyway, so we were here, so I had to just tell a story about Steve. So, uh, quick story. Quick story. So, we go to uh, my cousin's party, usually 4th of July or Labor Day or Memorial Day weekend. I don't remember when it was, Stephen. You probably know better. And uh, Stephen said, Hey, brother, uh, get all the Manhattan mix. I'm like, What? So, I break, I what, what, like, what? Blah, blah, blah. we get all the Manhattan mix, this and that. So, we roll. We roll. Donnelly's been there a couple of times too. Uh, I don't know if Donnelly was there at that same time. I think he was for some reason. But anyway, the next thing you know, it was a Manhattan party, so to say, and uh, they were some of the best Manhattans I ever drank. So I had like the the, the double-edged sword. So I had Stephen making Manhattans and Donnelly cooking like a fool, and uh, it was it was it's always great times. You know what you I'm know saying? You know what the key is to so Manhattan? Great times. What's that? Good whiskey. Amen. Amen. And speaking of that, you have any whiskey news for today? I, I do, but I don't know if I'm in the position to talk. But I will well, give no, it a and shot. I know Doug. <laughs> I think Doug has a lot of news, and we're running really long today. So we why don't long. we just cut to Doug's news, if that's okay with you, sweetie? Uh, you had something okay. you really no, no, I was just running off my thing. Anyway, no, you're fine. You I didn't feel wanna... good, strong about. Let's. Uh, you mean you have a lot of the same news, so. Um, I don't know. You know that? Well, well Kentucky we do... Owl. Go ahead. Okay. Go Kentucky ahead, Owl Straight Bourbon, a batch 10 has just been released. Um, and um, we, we know them pretty well. Good good blend of uh, straight, it's straight bourbon aged in, in, in Providence. And... Uh, Price is about uh, a mere three hundred dollars a bottle. Really? Yeah. Well, that's Kentucky it's Owl, ten year old. Uh, proof is sixty point one ABV. Okay. Isn't that? I'm sorry. Didn't we win the Ohio Liquor Control Kentucky Owl? Oh, that was on a. Uh, we did. We did. We, it was a. Uh, uh, yes. Go ahead. Anyway, that's a whole different okay, story. I, I'm just, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying talk. to put it together. And they okay. also uh, released just recently their Owl Straight Rye Batch 4, 10 years old, 56.4 ABV, and another $300 price tag. So Kentucky Owl continues to release very high-priced premium products. Okay. Um, nice. Um, 
You got some? I do. Okay, go, G. So uh, Barton, 1792, is Ooh. debuting a new entirely... Debuting? Debuting. <laughs> debuting? Debuting. There we go. Okay. This is why I don't do the news. <laughs> but you do do it, and we love it. Right. Oh, you said do do. Uh, uh, new... <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. You do do, uh, you do do it. You do do it, G. I pooped, I pooped my pants. Um... <laughs> Debuting a new line entirely devoted to experimental finished bourbons. The Thomas S. Moore line of whiskeys will be an annual release of the distillery's high rye mash bill, finished in various wine spirit casts from around the world. The 2020 release on the shelves this month features three finishes Cabernet. So, uh, say the wine, Sauvignon. 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 Port and Chardonnay. Okay. Amongst other things, uh, Moore's biggest accomplishments is likely building uh, what is the new Barton 1792 distillery. Am I, uh, if I'm speaking out of turn, call me out, but I think 1792 is owned by Sazerac. Yes. That's, so that's like a Buffalo Trace product. Okay. I have not had any Bardstown product that I didn't like. No, okay. you so, have not, especially right. the Bardstown yeah. I bought you recently. Amen. Amen. And we just got a couple different things. But anyway, you know, the I won't go there. I'll forget about it. Uh, Moore built the Bardstown's first cathedral. Sorry, kids, I've been drinking all day. Um, cathedral and, uh, yeah, right, and created the Bell of Nelson brand and opened his own oh, distillery okay. in 1889. It operated for decades before prohibition shuttered its shuttered its doors. Shuttered? Shutted. Shut. Thank you. Shuttered its doors. All right, thank you. Moore's name is attached to these whiskeys in tribute of the spirit and of innovation. Uh, the Moore line is going to serve uh, as Barton's showcase space for extended. Can you get the? Thank you. This happened last week. Made Marion is. Cast finish. Uh, it's already taken care of. Got it. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, hey, Marion. Yeah. Just tell them to put it on the chair. Yeah. All right. Sorry, kids. Oh, the pizza's delivered. Correct. Is it that? I don't gosh, want her opening that the late. door. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. We're. Dinner is served. It's time to. Uh, Sorry, kids. This happened to me last week too. No, no, you're fine. That's All why right. I was trying to hurry up, but the, the guys more, here. The so more line is well going to serve going. as Barton Showcase space for extended cast finishes. Finishes it of between uh, two and five years, according to the master distiller Danny Kahn. Uh, it's a major differentiation from the uh, majority of bourbons finishes uh, on the market today. So, uh, I'm just trying to uh, get some pricing here. Jennifer Bug says there's a new Bardstown coming out. Suggested retail price of $70 yeah. a bottle. Typically, the debut uh, in the uh, fall forwarding, Con said COVID related uh, delays impacted this year's release. So, that's what I have, kids. What do you got? Nice. Well, I. I got a lot more, but I think we're kind of out of time, so right. we'll save that for. Uh, you sure? Huh? You sure? Yeah, let's call it. It's okay. late. Let's yeah, call we'll it. call let's it. Call um, it. We'll call save it. some of this for uh, 2021. Um, you got it. Um, there, you go. there are a lot of good single malts. Um, I'll just end by saying Diageo. Dia Diageo re released a lot of distillers editions for um, a number of single malts and. Craig and Moore, Dalwini, Glen Kinchy, Lagavulin, Oban, and Talisker all um, just recently released in November, at the end of November. So in whiskey time, that's that's practically yesterday. And so, uh, we'll, but we'll cover that on our. We won't. Well, I don't know. Well, we'll. I don't know if we're going to do news next week because probably we not going to do news. We have a lot going on next week next on our week. on our holiday week. special edition. But I think when we when we come back in uh, January, we'll we'll cover some more of the the whiskey uh, releases and whiskey news. So, I, w do you have any closing words for that, us? That we're going to wrap, and yeah, let me let me um, get down to uh, some of our closing information. Make sure that um, 
There we go. <laughs> Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube page if you've not already and follow us on Facebook. If you have any questions or comments or you want to be a guest on the show, you can comment on Facebook or email us directly at the Whiskey Roundtable at gmail.com. And remember the remember children, the best way to get a puppy for Christmas is to beg for a baby brother. <laughs> <laughs> When asked, uh, when asked what uh, life's philosophy he lived by and owed his success to, he said, and this is from Winston Churchill for our final For our quote. cigar smokers. Yeah, so what life's philosophy he lived by and owed his success to, he said, my rule of life prescribed as an absolutely sacred right is smoking cigars amen and also the drinking of whiskey before during and after meals and quite necessarily in the intervals between them that's a lot that, all right okay, it's whenever you get a chance now all right Tom. Pretty All right, much. kids. We'll All right, let's wrap week. it up. We got a long show today. We are the Whiskey Wizard, Big G. <laughs> we're the Whiskey Round Table. Oh, we're that. We're both. Well, <laughs> no, you're not the Whiskey Wizard. I don't. Well, unless you want to be. So we are the Whiskey Wizard. Yes, you. We are the Whiskey Wizard. That's what I said. We're the Whiskey Round Table. Oh, yeah, I'm just playing. Oh. Anyway, kids, I apologize. Y'all fell for we it. We all the... fell for it. All right, kids. We are the Whiskey Round Table, Big G. Karen Ellen Collar. And also, we are drunk. <laughs> and I am Douglas Dunbar, and we'll see you next time, folks. All right. You all have a good weekend. Be safe, guys. <laughs> Don't yeah. drink like Holy us and hell, drive. Man. Please. Okay. Stay home. We're supposed to be professionals. Right, We're good. We'll see you. All right. Have a good night. Right, good bye-bye. weekend. See ya. If whiskey stopped working, every bar in town Closing their doors, shutting down Everybody would be trapped with their thoughts Cause nothing knows the pain Like bourbon or scotch, oh no Oh no, no If whiskey, whiskey stopped working Where the hell would I be? Probably wasting lots of money Trying therapy Whiskey stopped working, what the hell would I do? Honestly, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't be over you. Whiskey stopped working, whiskey stopped working, whiskey stopped working. Tennessee. If whiskey, whiskey stopped working, what the